I've got a question for you. Do you want to feel more confident in the clothes you're wearing, have a more cohesive wardrobe, save some money and have more outfits to choose from? If so, stay tuned because I'm going to tell you how today. So when you hear the words capture wardrobe, you're either going to be going, yes, 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 or no, I'm running for the hills. But stop, hear me out for a minute. When I started on my YouTube journey, I felt the same way. What I knew of a capsule wardrobe was that you had all these rules, whether it was colour, what garments go together, how many garments you can have, etc, etc. It seemed so tight on rules that it did not appeal to me at all. I honestly could not run far away enough from the idea of a capsule wardrobe. But lately I've been doing some research, reading up on it, watching other people's vlogs. But I've educated myself on what a capsule wardrobe is, all the rules and regulations, etc. And I had to think about how I can make it fit in with me and what I do, my personality, because my personality is not much of a rule follower. And so that just repels me, completely repels me. But I know capsule wardrobes are very popular. So I wanted to come up with a way that can give you guys lots of value, but meet my own needs as well. That's why today I'm bringing you the first video in a mini series about a capsule wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe with no rules, only our own guidelines that we set up for ourselves. Stay to the end of the video to hear about the other videos that will be coming up in this series. So in case you don't know, a capsule wardrobe is essentially a roadmap for utilising a small selection of clothes, usually basics, that will be worn interchangeably over a period of time. Usually a season, but they do transcend seasons because they're basics that can be worn with anything. So the term capsule wardrobe was actually coined by a lady called Susie Foe. She owned a boutique in the West End of London. It was in the 70s and she sold clothes that could be worn interchangeably and go with anything. The idea behind it was that the clothes she sold in the capsule wardrobe would be used with trending pieces. So for each season you could buy one or two trending pieces and have a wardrobe of basics that would go with those trending pieces. So the capsule wardrobe concept had a resurgence in the 80s. It was made more popular by a fashion designer called Donna Karan. And to be honest, it's never really died off since. It sort of goes up and down in how popular it is, but it doesn't actually ever die off. A quick Google search showed me 24 million results. So this is a really hugely popular concept. So most of those results pertain to buying clothes, getting out of the fast fashion rat race and improving the environment. They're really, really good things if you ask me. The idea is that by having good quality, cohesive basics that last over lots and lots of seasons, you are then buying less because you're only buying the trending pieces that you need. But how does that relate to us in the sewing world? Well, it does really relate actually, because although we're not generally buying lots of fast fashion, I know for myself, I make pretty much all of my clothes and I know a lot of you do too. So we're not really absorbed in the fast fashion, but we are in a way. I'm a prime example here with my fabric stash. Many of us have an addiction to buying fabric. We love it, it makes us feel good. Obviously we need it to sew, to have clothes. But there's a fast fashion in buying fabrics as well because the fast fashion clothes that are produced in other countries they have to get their fabric somewhere and our fabrics come from the same places really we might be making our own clothes but we're not necessarily reducing the impact on the environment i mean when i started to sew i was buying all the fabrics i could not buy fabrics fast enough and i bought high quality i bought low quality i bought medium quality i bought all the quality and many of them have gone unused. I've touched on it on previous videos on my um, dumbest purchases video, actually. I touched on it, but I bought loads and loads of quilting cottons. You can see many of them there. 
I will be doing a video related to that. I'll tell you about that in a little while. Different fabrics will have different impacts on the environment and generally speaking, the cheaper the fabric, the more impact it will have on the environment. But I've been in two minds about talking about this in the past because for myself, I was in a position where if I wanted to sew, I needed to buy cheap fabrics. Let's face it, we all love a bargain and I am no different. And I would buy cheap fabrics but have lots of fabrics and that would be because wow because I love buying all the fabrics and I wanted to get a good deal I thought I was doing something really good actually when I buy cheap fabrics and make the garment I'm making the garment for cheaper and then getting a deal on buying garments what I have learned over time is buy quality because cheap does not last so I might make a garment out of something really cheap and it's not going to last five minutes and by the time I've bought loads and loads of cheap fabric I keep on the treadmill of making stuff I may as well have bought the one quality piece of fabric and had it last so in effect by purchasing very cheap fabrics I am taking part in fast fashion even though I don't go to the big shops to buy my clothes so actually I think with that in mind a capsule wardrobe will be a really good idea to help me reduce my carbon footprint is that what they call it and feel better in myself if you need to buy cheap fabrics then no judgment at all but for me in the place i'm at now i feel i will benefit from having more quality fabrics buying less of them you'll see when i there's a video i'm going to do in a couple of videos time and you will see you'll get to have a good look at my wardrobe and you will see that a lot of what i've got is not good quality at all and i want that to change so I like the idea of a capsule wardrobe for the following reasons. First and foremost, it's because I don't have any real sense of style. I know some of you very kindly leave these gorgeous comments saying that I've given you good inspiration for style, but I personally do not feel confident in my style. My wardrobe is definitely not cohesive. I buy all the fabrics and all the patterns that I want on a whim and then none of it mixes and matches very well together. I've got a number of pieces that can be worn on their own but they don't go together. Like I've got a number of t-shirts but I don't wear them because I, I only wear leggings on the bottom and so they don't go. So looking back I'm like why did I make them? But I made them because that's what I wanted to make in the moment. Another reason I'm really interested in doing a capsule wardrobe is because I've always been interested in colour and how it can really enhance how we look. I've never really understood how it could help me. To be honest, I get a lot of my knowledge from you lovely guys who leave comments down below and say this colour suited you or, or I prefer this colour on you. And I get a lot of my knowledge that way because I look at it and I don't know what's going on i get a vague idea but i don't know problem is while i'll get some people saying one set of colors works for me i'll get another set of people saying the other works for me so in the bigger picture i don't really have any clearer idea and i feel that through doing a capsule wardrobe i can learn what's going to work for me a bit better so another reason that I think a capsule wardrobe could be really helpful is that I'm in a limited space. I live in an apartment that's essentially two rooms. So I've got the lounge where I'm sat now and I've kind of taken over this corner. I only have a rail to put all of my clothes on and I make make after make and they take up lots of room on the rail. Once this year already I've had to like take loads of stuff out that I don't wear and put it in a box and I keep it mainly because at the end of the year I want to do a lookbook of all the things I've made. So many of the things that are sitting in my rail at the moment I've worn maybe once or twice in its life and that could be for a range of reasons. It might be because the fabric's cheap and it's stretched out and it doesn't fit me it might be because i've got nothing to go with it it might be because i no longer like the style it could be because the fit isn't that great on me anymore because my sewing's got better over time there are so many reasons and actually i think if i can downsize my wardrobe 
get rid of everything that is not serving me and keep what I want. I'll have room. I basically I'll have space. I'll have energy because I'll be making less things and wearing them more and I'll have more money because I'm not spending money on patterns and fabric as much as I was. So let's talk about some of the general rules that are out there and it really does depend on where you look. I looked on a range of websites and there were different variants of the same kind of rules. Let me just be really clear, I'm not interested in following the rules for a capsule wardrobe. I am going to be adapting rules to fit in with me and what I like and I really recommend that you do that too. But first let's have a look at the rules because we can't break them until we know what they are. So some of the rules I have came up against is have a clear out, aim for 50 pieces in your wardrobe or less, now that seems really overwhelming to me. Only wear those clothes for a whole season. I've never ever thought like that before in my life. Choose a limited colour palette and stick to it. I am going with a specific colour palette and but it's not very limited as you'll see. Choose stars that flatter your body shape. <laughs> no, why should I? I choose clothes because I enjoy them. Choose colours that work with your complexion. That's something I want to look at. Choose classic shapes and patterns. And choose high quality fabrics. As I say, there are just some of them. There are many, many more rules. But there are just a few that kept coming up time and time again. So that may seem like quite a few rules. And it did to me when I first was introduced to the idea of a capsule wardrobe. But over time, I decided... Mm -mm -mm, not happening I am going to make what I want why do I want to be controlled by someone else's idea of what I should wear not happening and I know that if I do a capsule wardrobe and follow all those rules I'll last five minutes before I give in the good news is the capsule wardrobe rules are not law so you can look at them assess what's going to work for you and what fits your own personal needs and then just discard the rest, which is what I'm going to do. So I've created a booklet which you can download below. There will be a link down below. So if you click that link, you'll get access to my booklet. And in that booklet, it will help you to assess your own needs and come up with a bespoke capsule wardrobe plan that you can then go on to implement. So you can ask yourself some pertinent questions such as, what do you want to achieve by doing a capsule wardrobe. Are you a rule follower? Which of these rules can you get behind and which ones are you gonna leave in the distance? Bye-bye. So which aspects are you interested in and not interested in? You can create your own pathway to a curated classic handmade wardrobe. Your wardrobe can include very few guidelines or a lot if you like. So the main thing is you stay true to yourself and that's my biggest takeaway for this video. So once you've decided which parts work for you and which don't, it's time to have a look in your wardrobe. So have a look in your wardrobe and assess your contents. So what is missing? What do you have too much of? What do you have just enough of? Make a list of everything you need and think about things such as colour and texture of fabrics. Do you want to include shoes, jewellery and accessories within your capsule wardrobe? That's a really important thing to ask yourself. In order to make the garments that you need to make, you're going to have to assess your fabric situation and your pattern situation. I would recommend that you do use the fabrics that you have before purchasing more. That way you'll save money, which is one of the goals of this whole capsule wardrobe. And the same with patterns. Use the patterns you've got. If you're anything like me, you're going to have hundreds of patterns in your stash. So then you'll want to pair your patterns and your fabric together. But do that being mindful of the bigger picture. So not just whether that fabric goes with that pattern, but does that garment and the colours and the textures and everything else fit in with your wardrobe that you have or that you are creating and actually how often are you likely to wear these pieces 
is another thing that you should really be considering. For example, I'm largely housebound, so making an evening gown would not make any sense for me. So once you've done that, it's time to get making the garments. So enjoy that process, enjoy your final pieces. And at the end, you should have a curated wardrobe with lots of pieces that will interchangeably work with each other. So in effect, you will have lots more outfits that you can wear. So as mentioned earlier, this is the first video in a mini series about my capsule wardrobe, not follow it. Something, I'm gonna call it something along the lines of my capsule wardrobe, no rules, or let's not look at the rules type thing. I haven't decided on the title yet. You'll know it because you've clicked on this video, haven't you? So this is the first one. In my next video, I am going to be going through all of my fabric stash, both on this shelf and I have another box with some more bits of fabric in it. And so I'm going to expose myself and show you all my fabrics. I'm going to go through them. So for example, I have this one. I'll talk about what it is, when I bought it, all the details. Some of these fabrics I don't intend on keeping so I will be letting you know if they are for sale as I know some of you were quite keen to buy my other fabrics I mentioned in my dumbest purchases video so I thought you might enjoy if some of my fabrics are up for sale that will help me and it'll help you as well so then once that video is done I'm going to have a video where I try on everything in my wardrobe and I'll talk to you and they're all well, 99.9% .9 all makes that I've made myself. So I will tell you about what pattern it is and whether I liked it or not, um, why I'm keeping it or why I'm getting rid of it. After that, I'll consider myself decluttered, but that's not where the fun ends. After that, I will be having a video, which is a fabric haul. I've got some fabrics here, just there that are fairly new fabrics i haven't shown them to you so i'm going to show you a bit of a fabric haul and i'm going to pair them up with patterns for my capsule wardrobe so i haven't gone into great detail about my intentions with my own capsule wardrobe yet i just wanted to introduce this to you and you will find that out as we go along in the mini series and then i will be doing a lookbook with all my makes after that I will go through and do reviews of all the patterns that I've made. So if that all sounds really good to you, do hit that subscribe button. I think it's down in that corner. Click the like button because that tells me you like this video and leave me a comment. Let me know if you've ever done a capsule wardrobe, whether you liked it or whether you are interested in doing it now. I'd be really, really pleased to know. And don't forget my download down below. It will be part of You'll need to sign up for a newsletter in order to get it, but that is just for me to give you a monthly update. And if you don't want the newsletter, as soon as you've downloaded your um, download, downloaded your download, as soon as you've downloaded the booklet, you can then unsubscribe from the newsletter if you like. You won't hurt my feelings, I promise. This video has been an absolute blast. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, researching it and putting it together. And I really look forward to showing you the next one in my series. In my series. In my series. Until next time, happy sewing. Bye for now.